Hi guys, this is IGCSE O level chemistry paper 22 November 2018 question 11. The diagram shows a circuit used to electrolyze aqueous copper to sulfate. Which arrow indicates the movement of copper ions in the electrolyte and of the electrons in the external circuit? So the positive electrode is the anode from where the electrons would flow away because anode is where oxidation takes place and oxidation is loss of electron. So arrow 3 represents the direction of flow of electrons. And since oxidation takes place at the anode, the other uh, movement is that of copper ions. So copper ions would be moving away from the positive electrode, which is indicated by arrow labeled 2. So we have copper ions represented by arrow 2 and electrons represented by arrow 3 which makes option C the correct option for this question. Question 12. Hydrogen peroxide HOOH decomposes to form water and oxygen. The bond energies are shown in the table. What is the energy change for this reaction? So the bonds broken are 4 OH bonds and 2 O single bond O. These are the bonds that are broken. And the bonds that are formed are 4 OH bonds and 1 O double bond O. So as we can see, we've got 4 OH bonds being broken and 4 OH bonds being formed. So we can eliminate this from our calculation because they will have the same value in the negative and the same value in the positive because Bond breaking requires energy, so the energy would be positive, and bond making would release energy, so the energy would be negative. So the energy change for these bonds would be equal to zero. So we are left with breaking of two O, o, o single bonds and formation of one O double bond O. So now we have two into O, o single bond is 150. This would be positive and we have O double bond O, which is 496. This would be negative. So this comes to 300 minus 496, which will give us an enthalpy change value of negative 196 kilojoules per mole, which would make option B the correct option for this question. Question 13. The equation for the formation of ammonia is shown. The energy level diagram for the reaction is shown. So the activation energy is plus 250 and the total energy released is minus 342. And energy, what is the energy change for this reaction? So the energy change would be plus 250 minus 342. This would give us a value of minus 92 kilojoules per mole, which makes option B the correct option for this question. Question 14. The rate of reaction between magnesium ribbon and 2 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid at 25 degrees Celsius to produce hydrogen gas is measured. In another, in another experiment, either the concentration of the hydrochloric acid or temperature is changed. All other conditions are kept the same. Which condition increases the rate of reaction? So we have all the temperatures either at 25 or 10. So a decrease in temperature would decrease the rate of reaction, eliminating options B and D. So we are left with, wait, which condition increases the rate of reaction? B, uh, this eliminates B and C. Because C is 20, D is 25. So D remains as one of the potentially correct options. We eliminate options B and C. Because the temperature is lower, so the rate of reaction would be lower. Now, for A and D, since the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, so the rate would now depend on the concentration of hydrochloric acid used. 
in a the concentration of hydrochloric acid used is decreased to 1 mole per dm cube the lower the concentration the lower the rate of reaction so option a gets eliminated and option d has 3 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid the concentration has increased so the greater would be the rate of reaction at 25 degrees celsius making option d the correct option for this question Question 15. Ethanol is prepared by the reversible reaction shown. The forward reaction is exothermic. Which conditions produce the highest equilibrium yield of methanol? So we need to favor the forward reaction. And since the forward reaction is exothermic, a decrease in temperature would favor the forward reaction, eliminating options A and B. And we will continue with options C and D. And as far as pressure is concerned, the number of moles of reactants are 3 and the number of moles of products are 1. So an increase in pressure favors the side with the lesser number of moles, which would be the forward reaction. And in order to favor the forward reaction, the pressure must be high. So this eliminates option D and makes option C the correct option for this question. Question 16. The thermite reaction can be used to produce iron from iron 3 oxide. The equation for the reaction is shown. Which statement about this reaction are correct? Aluminium is the oxidizing agent? No, aluminium is oxidized to Al3 positive ion. So aluminium gets oxidized, so it is the reducing agent. Aluminium is less reactive than iron? No, in the reactivity series, aluminium is above iron. It is aluminium, zinc, and then iron. So aluminium is more reactive than iron. So this is incorrect as well. Next, electrons are transferred from aluminium to iron. Since aluminium is oxidized, it loses electron, which is accepted by Fe3 plus ions, which are reduced to Fe metal with an oxidation state of zero. So this statement is correct. And the iron in the iron three oxide is reduced. Yes, plus three to zero is reduction. Since statements 3 and 4 are correct, option D is the correct option for this question. Question 17. In which row are the oxides correctly identified? Acidic oxide, magnesium oxide is basic. Calcium oxide is also basic. So magnesium oxide is basic. Sulfur dioxide is acidic. Next, sulfur dioxide is acidic. Carbon dioxide is also acidic. Sulfur dioxide is acidic, magnesium oxide is basic. Now moving on to the other column. Sulfur dioxide is acidic, carbon dioxide is acidic. Carbon dioxide acidic, calcium oxide is basic. Calcium oxide is basic, magnesium oxide is basic. And calcium oxide is basic, carbon dioxide is acidic. So the only row with the correct oxides in the correct columns is row C making C the correct option for this question. Question 18. When dilute sulfuric acid is added to solid X, a colorless solution is formed and a gas is produced. So if copper to oxide is present, then the colorless gas will not evolve, but a blue colored solution will form. So this is incorrect. Sodium oxide will form a colorless solution, but no gas will be evolved. Copper to carbonate will have evolution of gas, but the solution form would be blue in color. Sodium carbonate would have evolution of carbon dioxide gas, and the solution form would be colorless, which is in accordance to what is given in the question, making option D the correct option for this question. Question 19. A few drops of methyl orange are added to a reaction mixture. During the reaction, a gas is produced and the methyl orange turns from red to orange. What are the reactants? So, a few drops of methyl orange are added to a reaction mixture. During the reaction, yeah, okay, turns from red to orange. So, basically, from an acidic condition, it goes to the neutral condition. So, what are the reactants? Echo sodium hydroxide and ammonium chloride. Sodium hydroxide is base, ammonium chloride is an acid, but this is a reaction between a strong acid, strong base, and a weak acid. So the 
remaining solution would be basic basic solution so the methyl orange should turn yellow aqueous sodium hydroxide is a strong base calcium carbonate is a weak base so this reaction will not happen dilute hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and magnesium ribbon added would liberate hydrogen gas and would form magnesium chloride magnesium chloride is a neutral solution and it is soluble in water as well so this is supposed to be the correct answer let's look at the last option dilute hydrochloric acid is a strong acid and aqua sodium hydroxide is a strong base so we would end up with a neutral solution however in this case gas would not be produced so this will not be the option therefore option c is the correct option for this question question 20 some general rules for solubility of salts in water are listed carbonates are insoluble except ammonium carbonate potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate chlorides are all soluble except lead to chloride and silver chloride nitrates are soluble all of them sulfates are soluble except for barium sulfate calcium sulfate and lead to sulfate which substances produce an insoluble salt when aqueous solutions of them are mixed so barium chloride and magnesium nitrate would produce ba barium nitrate and magnesium chloride both of which will be soluble so this is not it calcium chloride and ammonium nitrate would produce calcium nitrate and ammonium chloride both of which are soluble silver nitrate and zinc chloride would produce silver chloride and zinc nitrate silver chloride is insoluble so we have an insoluble salt being produced here Sodium carbonate and potassium sulfate would produce sodium sulfate and potassium carbonate, both of which are soluble. So the correct option for this question is option C.